Neurofibromatosis is a genetic neurological disorder that can affect the brain, spinal cord, nerves, and skin and is characterized by the formation of tumors on nerve tissue. Tumors, or neurofibromas, grow along the body's nerves on or underneath the skin. The tumors that develop are usually non-cancerous or benign. However, in some instances, they may become cancerous or malignant. Complications in neurofibromatosis can include hearing loss, learning impairment, heart and blood vessel or general cardiovascular problems, as well as loss of vision and severe pain. Scientists have classified neurofibromatosis into two distinct types, neurofibromatosis type 1, or NF1, and neurofibromatosis type 2, or NF2. Neurofibromatosis type 1 was formerly known as von Recklinghausen's disease and is the more common of the two types. For the duration of this video, we will mainly be focusing on neurofibromatosis type 1 and its associated genetic basis, as it is the most common form of NF and one of the most common genetic neurological disorders. Luckily, neurofibromatosis 1 has a wide range of symptoms to help with early detection and treatment of this possibly fatal genetic disease. Most likely, people with this disease will have common symptoms, usually appearing in childhood or early adulthood. The following signs and symptoms are often evident at birth or shortly afterward and almost always by age 10. Their severity typically finds itself in the mild to moderate range, but can always vary due to the individuality of the patient. Common signs and symptoms include flat, light brown spots on the skin, or cafe au lait spots. Having more than six of these spots is a strong indication of NF1. These spots are relatively harmless and usually appear during the first few years of life before stabilizing later on in the patient's life. Lish nodules. These are tiny lumps on the iris of the eye. Unfortunately, the harmless modules cannot be easily seen by the naked eye, but they have not been yet proven to cause any short or long-term vision loss. Neurofibromas. Perhaps the most common symptom of NF1, these benign tumors usually develop under the skin to appear as soft bumps from the exterior of the body. Increased danger may come when these fibromas begin to grow inside of the body, potentially involving multiple nerves, known as a plexiform neurofibroma. This carries the risk of metastasizing and the potential for these tumors to become malignant, as mentioned previously. An estimated 3 to 5% of people with NF1 will develop these cancerous tumors. Bone deformities. NF1 has been known to cause abnormal bone growth and deficiencies in bone mineral density. Advanced cases of these symptoms include a curved spine or a bowed lower leg. Cardiovascular problems. High blood pressure is also at an increased risk for people suffering from NF1 due to the abundance of tumors. Learning disabilities. Impaired inquiry skills are common in younger children with NF1. These are often mild but also very specific, like attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. Advanced and uncommon neurological problems or uncommon complications include the buildup of excess fluid in the brain, which can lead to larger than normal head size and a below average height in children. Mutations in the NF1 gene are the cause of neurofibromatosis type 1. The NF1 gene provides instructions for making a protein called neurofibromin. This protein is produced in many cells, including nerve cells and specialized cells surrounding nerves, such as oligodendrocytes and Schwann cells. These cells are also responsible for the formation of myelin sheaths, which act as the fatty coverings that insulate and protect nerve cells. Neurofibromin that is functioning properly acts as a tumor suppressor protein and therefore keeps cells from growing and dividing too rapidly or in an uncontrolled way that, if unregulated, would eventually yield tumors. This protein is also responsible for preventing cell overgrowth by turning off another protein called RAS that stimulates cell growth and division. Mutations in the NF1 gene lead to the production of a non-functional, shortened version of neurofibromin that cannot regulate cell growth and division. As a result, tumors such as neurofibromas can form along the nerves throughout the body. More than 1,000 NF1 mutations that cause neurofibromatosis type 1 have already been identified. In about 50% of the cases, neurofibromatosis type 1 is inherited from an affected parent, and the other 50% of the cases result from a new or de novo mutation occurring for the first time in people with no family history of neurofibromatosis type 1. It is believed that the remarkably large size of the NF1 gene has actually contributed to the high number of cases of neurofibromatosis as the large size of the gene leads to a greater chance of random error during cellular growth and DNA replication. Many different mutations of the NF1 gene have been identified in individuals with the disorder, varying from deletions to insertions and point mutations. 
scientists have determined that some severely affected individuals may have a deletion of the entire NF1 gene, as well as the deletion of material from other adjacent or contiguous genes, potentially contributing to the wide variability of symptoms and findings in those with the disorder. Therefore, those genes responsible for cognitive function and biodevelopment that surround NF1 are also lost. Those who suffer from this form of whole gene deletion often experience a more severe form of neurofibromatosis, with neurofibromas forming earlier and more often. Additionally, there tends to be a greater possibility for these neurofibromas to develop into their cancerous forms. A more localized form of NF1, called segmental neurofibromatosis type 1, is caused by a genetic change in the NF1 gene that is not inherited, but rather occurs sporadically during embryo development and is thus a somatic mutation. Neurofibromatosis type 1 is considered to have an autosomal dominant pattern of inheritance. People with this condition are born with one mutated copy of the NF1 gene in each cell. In about half of the cases, the altered gene is inherited from an affected parent. The remaining cases result from new mutations in the NF1 gene and occur in people with no history of the disorder in their family. Unlike most other autosomal dominant conditions, in which one altered copy of the gene in each cell is sufficient to cause the disorder, two copies of the NF1 gene must be altered to trigger tumor formation in NF1. A mutation in the second copy of the NF1 gene occurs during a person's lifetime in specialized cells called Schwann cells. Almost everyone who is born with one NF1 mutation acquires a second mutation in many cells and develops the tumor characteristic of neurofibromatosis type 1. With regards to its cytogenetic location, the NF1 gene is located at 17Q11.2, and its molecular location lays somewhere between base pairs 31 million and 31,400,000 000 on chromosome 17 at position 11.2. As a result, its location rules out the possibility of being a sex-linked autosomal dominant disorder, which is arguably the most dangerous. Neurofibromatosis treatment aims to maximize healthy growth and development and to manage complications as soon as they arise. When neurofibromatosis causes large tumors that press on a nerve, surgery can help ease these symptoms. Some people may benefit from other therapies, such as stereotactic radiosurgery or medications to control pain. Neurofibromatosis cannot be cured. However, various treatments are available the majority of which are designed to start treating patients at the youngest age possible to ensure proper and monitored development. Because neurofibromatosis may cause abnormal growth in a child's early life, it is important to receive repeated checkups in which changes in skin color, blood pressure, weight and height, and vision will be noted to determine whether or not one is developing a neurofibroma. Neurofibromas are most often treated with surgery to remove the tumors that are compressing nearby tissues and damaging organs. Stereotactic radiosurgery may also be used and involves focusing radiation directly on tumors without any incision. However, it is more common with NF2. Pain medications may also be prescribed to help cope with the severe pain often associated with neurofibromas. These include Neurontin and Lyrica for nerve pain, tricyclic antidepressants such as amitriptyline, and serotonin for appetite and eating problems. One possible significant preventative treatment for NF1 would involve Gene therapy. This continues to be an ongoing research study, but neurologists have hypothesized that a possible plasmid vector for this therapy would be more beneficial than a typical viral vector. As a result, this would avoid the problems of inactivation of other genes by random insertion and the unwanted activation of the immune system. Without going into the complicated specifics of this technology, a plasmid was constructed using the one-step Gibson cloning ligation technique. Scientists from California State University transfected the construct into a cultured NF1 cell derived from an individual with the disease. The effectiveness of the vector was determined by estimating the level of active RAS in cells with initiated in with the plasmid. A significant difference in these levels between cells that were transfected versus non-transfected cells suggests that the gap domain of neurofibromin, which is the protein responsible for permanently active RAS that results in the programmed cell death associated with cancer in this disease, was, success was successfully transcribed and complements the inability of these cells to inactivate RAS. These results support the possibility of gene therapy for those individuals whose chance of inheriting the disease are likely. This type of therapy would also serve to prevent current side effects. These advances in technology are continually aiming to find a positive base in such a terrible disease. 
Overall, the future treatment of NF1 has a bright future with the discovery of this gene therapy. The majority of neurofibromatosis type 1 diagnoses occur early on in childhood as the penetrance of neurofibromatosis type 1 is near 100% by the age of 8. Most often, neurofibromatosis type 1 is identified early on in a child's life given the observable symptoms, and thus doesn't often require a genetic verification if it is inherited. In the case of clinical diagnoses, a criterion chart such as the following may often be used, and as long as the patient has at least two of the following criteria, it is almost guaranteed that they would have neurofibromatosis type 1. These criteria include six or more cafe au lait macules, freckling, neurofibromas, skeletal dysplasia, Lisch nodules, optic gliomas, as well as a first-degree relative with neurofibromatosis type 1. If one develops neurofibromatosis type 1 from a de novo mutation, it is likely that the symptoms will present themselves slightly later in life, and thus often requires genetic testing to be sure of a correct diagnosis. In this process, DNA samples are taken and analyzed using methods such as RNA analysis, sequence analysis for coding regions on NF1, as well as a deletion and duplication analysis of the NF1 gene. Because the approximate location of NF1 is already known, the gene is isolated, its base sequence determined, and then compared with the correct sequence. Thus, if the sequence is different, that individual would have a mutation. Genetic counseling may also be used to assist those suffering from neurofibromatosis type 1, and the main goal is to provide accurate information regarding the disease. Because of the variability of symptoms of neurofibromatosis type 1, it is important to narrow down the list to determine what exactly the individual is experiencing. Counseling is also meant to address issues such as a potential for malignancy to develop and provide a proper assessment of one's risk of developing this form of neurofibroma. The psychosocial aspect of neurofibromatosis type 1 is very important as well, and therefore providing assurance that the disease is treatable is central. Additional facts. Neurofibromatosis has been classified into three distinct types, neurofibromatosis 1, neurofibromatosis 2, and schwannomatosis. NF1 is the most common neurological disorder caused by a single gene. Neurofibromatosis affects an estimated 100,000 people in the U.S., occurring in all ethnic, ethnic groups. The statistics on neurofibromatosis also show that it has a 50% chance of developing in a child who has one parent with a mutated gene. Type NF1 neurofibromatosis affects 1 in 3,000 to 4,000 people in the U.S. 50% of NF1 cases are inherited and the other half occur spontaneously. Symptoms of NF1 usually appear by age 10. 5 to 10% of NF1 tumors luckily become malignant. Mean and median ages at death for persons with NF1 were 54.4 and 59 years. Therefore, those suffering from NF often die substantially earlier than the standard life expectancy, with a general decrease in life expectancy of approximately 15 years. Occurrences of NF1 and NF2 are present among all racial groups and affect both sexes equally. Thank you for listening to this presentation, and I hope you learned something about this genetic disease.